meantime, the competition is just heating up just hours before tonight's highly anticipated second Republican debate. Republican rivals are looking to break out and steal the thunder from the Trumpster. But can they do it? They haven't been able to do it before. John Roberts is live at the Reagan Library in Simi Valley, California. John, whisper because everybody else is sleeping. A lot. Donald Trump has <laughs> Not everybody here, Brian. There's a lot of action here already. Good morning to you, Brian, Steve, and Elizabeth. You know, one thing with Donald Trump, every time people think he peaks, he peaks just a little bit more. But people are expecting a lot of confrontation here at the Reagan Library tonight. One candidate told me that the way the host network is setting this up is there was going to be a big fight night, kind of a rumble at the Reagan Library. One of the most interesting things to watch tonight will be the dynamic between Donald Trump and Carly Fiorina. After his comments recently about Carly Fiorina's Face. Many people are expecting that she is going to take it directly to the Donald. Though appearing last night with Megyn Kelly, Fiorina played down the rivalry. Listen. Some others to watch. You know, honestly, Donald Trump says all kinds of things. I don't really worry much about what Donald Trump says, honestly. I'm out there talking with voters every day. This isn't entertainment, although it's obviously very entertaining to many people. But these are actually serious times. Fiorina needs a big night tonight, as does Rand Paul. Lagging in the polls, he's expected to hit Trump directly during the debate as he has in the campaign trail, pressing the theme, as he did with Megyn Kelly last night, that Trump is not a real conservative. Donald Trump was for President Obama's stimulus plan, government stimulus plan. No conservative in America was for it. He was for President Obama's Obamacare. No conservative in America was for that either. But the biggest thing that I think really shows who Donald Trump is, is that when you look at private property rights, the Conservative Club for Growth, the Action Fund, actually picked up on that. A million-dollar ad buy in Iowa saying that Trump supports eminent domain, that he's not a real conservative. They say that he is the worst person uh, on the Republican side when it comes to conservative economic principles. Now, in terms of the polls, take a look at this. Latest New York Times uh, CBS News poll. Donald Trump still out in front, 27 percent, up from 23 a month ago. But look at Ben Carson. Huge leap from 6 percent now to 23 percent. Bush Bad news for him, down by half. Now it's 6% from 13. Folks? All right, John Roberts, live in Simi Valley, California, where it's 3.04 in the morning. John, thank right. you very That's much. Right. He's going to be with us all morning long. So docked in Los Angeles right in that harbor, Donald Trump stood aboard the USS Iowa. Okay, and that entire sh fleet of ship w were actually set out with this motto, our liberties we prize, our rights we will maintain. And the ship that he was on and all of them had the nickname called the Big Stick. Known yep. for the big guns. You see them nine foot by There's 16 one behind foot. behind it. Yes, right there. And actually by its massive power and sleekness is what this entire fleet was known for. Appropriately so, Donald Trump had a big stick when it came to immigration and taking care of veterans. And his message was this. We're going to make our military so big and so strong and so great. It will be so powerful that I don't think we're ever going to have to use it. Nobody's going to mess with us. That I can tell you. We're going to make our country so great. We are going to make it strong. We are going to make it powerful. We are going to take care of our veterans. We have many problems in our country. One of them is immigration. Now, there's tremendous crime. There's tremendous drugs pouring across the border. Tremendous beyond going to Chicago, going to New York, going to L.A. We have illegal immigrants that are treated better by far than our veterans. People are not silent. They're disgusted with our incompetent politicians. They're disgusted with the people that are giving our country away. This is a movement. We're going to make our country great again. Believe me, we will make our country great again. So uh, that is rhetoric. Uh, we know those are the slogans, and that's his motivation. What I think Donald Trump is capable of doing, and I fully expect after the detailed release of his immigration plan and in two weeks his tax plan, I would love to see him see the money that's in the VA system, which I hear by experts is plenty, and hear his systems for uh, for gutting and, we sure. and, and weaving out and, ra and getting rid of those waiting rooms, the wait times, and making it more efficient. A restructuring of the incentive program, uh, a location, ability to go on their own, all the things 
we've discussed and debated here, that has to be the next step. Another reason to watch tonight and another reason why a lot has to be done, this is to me the most telling. The New York Times did a poll and asked people, have you made up your mind? 63% said it's too early. 37% said, that, yeah, we've made it up. So right. that's hope for the bottom half, too. Sure. Something he did do yesterday in his 15-minute speech there on the Iowa was he prepared a uh, proposed a Medicare-like system to expedite vets care. Uh, something else he did was he pledged he would never refer to the Ayatollah as Iran's supreme leader. If he's president of the United States, not going to call him supreme leader. Uh, also in attendance were hundreds of veterans for a strong America. That vet group actually endorsed him there on the deck of the Iowa. Meanwhile, about a block away were some immigrants' rights protesters, oh, yeah. and they were booing. They were trying to shout him down. They booed during the pledge. Called him a racist. Uh, they did. Uh, and that kind of ties into uh, the next uh, talking point we're going to uh, chat about regarding immigration and Joe Biden. But we would like to remind you, we'd like to know what you would like to see from the candidates tonight. Yes. On the debate, email us friends at foxnews.com, even though it's going to be on another network. We've got the post game show starting precisely at 11 p.m. tonight with Bill O'Reilly live, followed by Megan, followed by Sean. Watch all night long and get the best debate analysis on television That's right, right here. Superb and coverage coming your way tonight. All right, now let's talk about where Joe Biden was. Uh, Elizabeth, as you know, yeah, uh, last week he was talking about how he uh, is considering running. It's an emotional interview with uh, Stephen Colbert. Well, yesterday in front of uh, the Hispanic Heritage, group, uh, Hispanic Heritage Group, he decided to make them feel better about themselves because he believes there's one guy on the right who is, wants to clamp down on illegal immigration, and he doesn't want them to feel bad about America. Here's Joe Biden sounding very much like a candidate. Message. A sick one, he's saying, and sort of painting the entire Republican Party with it. Xenophobia, uh, as you just heard him right there. He's speaking to a group of about 75 people at his residence yesterday, sounding yeah. like a candidate in fact. Kind of. Absolutely. Uh, meanwhile, on page six today, there's an item about uh, Caroline Kennedy, and this is something you may not have uh, realized. When Hillary Clinton left the U.S. Senate to become the uh, Secretary of State, her Senate seat was open, and there was a move here in New York to have Caroline Kennedy take that seat. And the president wanted to see it happen. Well, as it sure, the Kennedy family gave Barack Obama a lot of uh, endorsement over the Clinton family. Well, as it turns out, behind the scenes, Sidney Blumenthal, a confidant to Hillary Clinton, apparently was trying to sandbag Caroline Kennedy. He had a deal where he could commission pieces for the Daily Beast, and there were two, there's Sidney right there, He's the pal of Hillary with all those emails floating around. He uh, had two pieces commissioned. One referred to her, uh, Caroline, as a puppet. The other described her candidacy as an insult. Seemingly undermining her ability Do you to think? jump in there and get the seat. So, ooh, that can't feel good. So imagine if she had jumped, it will jump in now as a revenge spot. And her insiders are saying it is a possibility. That Anything she's going to jump out as ambassador and, and endorse Joe Biden, yeah. really hurting, not as much as Ted Kennedy endorsing Obama over Hillary last time around but really hurting the credibility Hillary Clinton might still have with the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. That, according to Orb magazine, uh, Richard Turley reports about that. This is so Bernie Sanders be is gaining on Hillary Clinton, so this would just be another thorn in her side. Oh, right. boy. The knives are coming out. Meanwhile, it's a